This is Commercial Real Estate Secrets. I'm your host, Aviva. I'm a commercial real estate owner, broker, and your guide to low vacancy and high returns. Commercial Real Estate Secrets is at the intersection of real estate and reality, where the high stakes world of brick and mortar meet the digital age. Ready to build your empire? This is Commercial Real Estate Secrets. This week on Commercial Real Estate Secrets, we have a very, very special guest, Mr. Gary Vaynerchuk otherwise known as Gary V. Gary is one of the biggest internet personalities of all time. This month alone, he just released his sixth New York Times best-selling book, Day Trading Attention. Gary is a purebred entrepreneur, documented. He's built multiple businesses from scratch, one of which in the last nine years does over $200 million in revenue, profitable, not valuation. Gary's personal brand has over 44 million followers online with over 300 million monthly views across platforms. To be entirely honest with you, Gary has been my idol for next to a decade. Gary gives away free business advice online. And over the last 10 years, I built a company, The Warehouse Hotline, uh, based off of his free advice. So... This was a really exciting podcast to film, to talk to Gary about the biz, and I'm very, very excited to share it with you all. And with no further ado, I give you Gary V on Commercial Real Estate Secrets. Thank you for being on Commercial Real Estate Secrets. First off, congratulations on day trading attention, hitting uh, New York Times bestseller. The book was amazing. It's very well deserved. Thank you so much. I have six questions. Four minutes for each question. Are you ready? I am. Okay, let's begin. In 2019, you told me to hop on TikTok, and I did. It's paying dividends now, four and five years later. What should we be doing today that we can expect to pay dividends in four and five years? That's a great question. So things like TikTok, so the premise of day trading tension in the new book is there are overpriced and underpriced behaviors in marketing, in everything, in business, in life, but there are things that are higher value and there are things that are quote unquote wastes of time or not as good of a deal. I wrote the book right now because there's actually no answer to your question. Meaning, every so often a platform comes along and it's so big and people don't see it yet and that's when I scream all over social and I've done that obviously with you know, Snapchat and TikTok and YouTube Shorts and many other things. So the, the answer directly of platform underpriced attention that will pay off in the next two, three, four years, it's not currently active. What is active is practices within the platforms that can extract more value than the competition. So um, let me use this analogy because I want everybody to understand. If there's three pumpkin pies on the table and, and there's only two of us and we want to, both of us want to eat as much pumpkin pie, we're both probably going to get at least one and a half pies. Maybe one gets two, maybe one gets one, but we're going to get pie, right? That's what happens when a platform's underpriced. That was TikTok. Right now what's happening is there's 18 people in a room and there's 12 pies. And by the way, if you're the most clever of those 18 people, if you know the best moves, there's no reason you can't leave with four of the 18 pies or a fourth of one pie. That's the analogy. Right now, we're in a place where everybody has to be better at the content they make. You know, For you, for example, what I would be going ham on, if I bought your company and we became par- a piece of it, and we became partners, and today's day one. We just closed the deal, it's the Monday. Here it is, Monday, June 3rd, we just became partners. You made me a nice cup of coffee as I walked in. You said, all right, partner, you're Gary fucking V. Let's explode this business. What are we doing? I would say the first thing we're doing is we're creating a doubling down on the podcast because it's our point of entry to make content. But we are obsessed with LinkedIn, obsessed. And we're obsessed with LinkedIn ads because not only can we make content, but once the content does well organically, we can run ads against it towards the kind of people we want to attract, whether it's looking for supply, the deals, 
does your family own a warehouse in Denver? <laughs> or filling it, right, the demand. You know, are you looking for a warehouse in Denver to expand your business? So I would say LinkedIn and, believe it or not, YouTube Shorts is very interesting to me because YouTube's the second biggest search engine in the world behind Google. And I really do think content on that platform titled right, like literally Denver Warehouse Lease, Denver, like we could be very clever there. So from a marketing standpoint, and that really something I didn't talk about the book, I would, if we're just going to the analogy, I would get our search stronger, our SEM, like our ads, you know, like search engine marketing, like not organic, but like if somebody types in buying, you know, a Denver warehouse, I'd like to see where we sit on our Google AdWords. That's more intent-based selling than it is, let's say, social media marketing, but it would be on my mind. You told us to hop onto Google AdWords, uh, you know, five, 10 years ago, and we have just dominated as a result. So thank you. I have... And, and you know, I want to jump in on that because yeah. I want everybody to hear this. Um, I work out every day now. I got a lot, 10 years ago is when I started. Five years in, I was so much stronger. It was like profound. I was like, oh my God, I'm so strong. What I do today versus even 24 months ago blows my mind on curls, on benching. And so when I hear you crushing on AdWords, I wanna remind you that there's a bigger delta than you even can comprehend. You could probably drive down your costs and up your leads by getting your game tighter. So I just wanna make sure you hear that. I wanna make sure the audience hears that as well. I appreciate that. I have a full-time overseas assistant who is remote. How am I setting her up for success in helping me create authentic content at scale? That's a great question. So she is an assistant to the content, you mean? She is just my personal assist, uh, executive assistant. Admin. Correct. But she also, help, she also helps with content? Oh, yeah. Oh, I love it. Good for you. Okay. Um, well, there's two ways you help. And is she, like, literally making the clips and, like, making the stuff? Oh, yeah. Okay, so then the way you set her up is giving her more ammo, right? So more podcast episodes, more woman on the street, more, the more you do. Sure. Uh, I'll give you a good one. <clears throat> Something you should definitely be doing is green screening. So I'm gonna actually do this in real time. Denver, where? <laughs> That's awesome. All right, just typed in Denver warehouses. Great, so there's an article from the Denver Post on February 18th. Warehouse in Denver's Lincoln Park being turned into music venue, right? Yeah. Screen shoot, you talk, now you talk of like, you, you, and you know what I'm talking about with green screen, you've seen it from me and others, right? You, so one of the ways you can help her is giving her more ammo, including you doing quote unquote a little bit more. The green screen's incredible. The fact that you can talk about like, here is a use case for the, what we're seeing in the Lincoln Park area and just in warehouses in Denver in general. A lot of you think of it as just like fulfillment centers, but there's so much more you can be doing with it. So I like that because really on that, you're putting her on third and a half base. She just, once you do that video, you, she just needs to clean it up a little bit, potentially maybe thumbs, thumbnail, uh, helping you with copy, but you've put her on third and a half base, which is much further along than if you just give her the raw footage of this and say go. Sure. So I always think about how do I put my team in a position to succeed by giving them more. Okay. Oh, I love it. I love the accountability. You've taught me that. Yeah, exactly. Like I love where you, I'm, I'm proud of you that you saw where I was going. I think when we build infrastructure as leaders around ourselves, admins, creative partners, anybody, um, we're always like how do we get this better? And the answer is always it's on you. <laughs> yeah, 100%. You know, everyone's like, how do I get Ronnie to do better? I don't know, like, it's on you. Like, your communication to Ronnie. John's sitting here on my team right now. I gave him, like, yesterday I did a voicemail of, I wanted an ad for Wine Text. Um, by the way, everyone listening, sign up for winetext.com, best way to buy wine on the internet. My dad will be very happy. Um, you know, I wanted 
people, to, and I, I voice memoed a minute and five seconds. It's like, try this. So I'm also guiding creative strategy. That, you know, and it's a yin and yang. Like he did something prior to that by himself that I did not guide that I liked. I told him that, so it's positive reinforcement. That's good management. Something that I think comes natural to me, but oftentimes, even for me, like if I'm, I also don't want to just say it if I don't believe it. So like you got to manage authentically, but never hold back. I think um, sometimes people hold back on positive reinforcement because they don't want their employees to get big heads. I remember my dad used to do that a lot. He was scared that they would ask for a raise if he gave him positive reinforcement, <laughs> which really screwed up the culture. I'm being serious, you know, it's like real stuff. So yeah, accountability, like more on you, spending time with her, talking to her for 30 minutes a day or a week, depending on your life, of just like shooting the shit about like what's on your mind, what's going well, what's, what's potentially could be better, asking okay. her how you can help her. So asking is an answer to your question. I, I laugh about your father's business. My family business, uh, my grandfather was from the Soviet Union, family business. So I laugh because uh, uh, it's just, you know there it. are a lot of parallels and I've learned a lot from you about that. So let me ask you, we have a podcast, Commercial Real Estate Secrets, and I've got a list of my top 100, 200 prospects. How am I engaging my prospects on the podcast in a jab, jab, jab? left hook, right hook, excuse me, mm -hmm. fashion. No, ironically, day trading tensions, original title was jab, 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 left hook. Um, one more time, Abir, I wanna make sure I really understood that. I have the podcast. I have my top 200 prospects. I find it awkward to be like, hey, be on my show and convey that uh, eventually we would like to work with you in your warehouse in Denver's in Denver. How am I giving them the jab, 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 right hook? By, I love this question so much. It's okay that you would like to do business with them, but don't put them on your podcast with the expectation that that's what they owe you. Okay. Give without expectation, but understand the serendipity may work itself out. I that's the key. The reason I wrote Jab, 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 Right Hook, the premise for everyone who's listening is everyone on social was struggling because they just wanted things. They were selling the whole time. And so I was like, give, 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 and then ask. And don't mix your give and your ask. So what you asked there was, hey, Gar, it feels a little bit yucky or I don't know how to make this work for my stomach. I feel like because you were mixing them. Yeah. Right? You were mixing, mixing the ask and the, and the give. Just put them on. Okay. And yes, of course, like to me, the way I would do that is after you have a lovely podcast, whether you do it then because you feel like you hit it off or you do it in the future, um, this is how I would do it. So let's say you're on my podcast. We'll reverse roles. At the, let's say it really went well. We just hit it off. We laughed about our grandfathers from Russia. We laughed about our kids went to the same school. We laughed about both being into some sort of watching Bridgerton, because you know, podcasts can go anywhere, right? If it goes well, no different than like a first date where you ask someone out for a second date or no different than like you met somebody in fifth grade and you both had a nice time in the playground. You're like, you wanna come over to my house and be friends? Like you, I think if it went well, especially if you did it in person, which I, I highly recommend. Okay. Right, especially because you're in the same market. You're being very, you know, I'd highly recommend doing it in person. If you do it in person, it goes well, literally, like after your banter of the show, you literally are saying, I'll do it with you, I'll be you, you be, the, I'll be like, I mean, that was a lot of fun. Like, obviously, you're aware that this is what I do for a living. Like, if, if you ever need anything, please let me know. Uh, hope you have the best day, like, always around. Thank you, that's it. Literal, simple, like, hey. Um, or if it didn't go like as smashing well, it was kind of professional, didn't seem like the opening there was, I would literally wait six months to a year and reach out via email and be like, hey, maybe even a year. Hey, it's the one year anniversary of our podcast together. Hmm. Um, thinking back to it, was a lot of fun having you on. Hope everything's been going well. How's that uh, development thing you're doing down in you know downtown? Uh, just to remind you, maybe wasn't even on your radar, this is what I do. Um, would love to you know, grab a drink and talk business if there's anything around. I just think those are very respectful ways, but when they don't reply or they don't reciprocate, it doesn't even, con it doesn't even run through your head as if 
anything went wrong. Because you didn't put you, of course you understood that you may be able to do business with them on the back end, but you know, the punchline is you really are okay. You, you put them on the platform without actual expectation that it would 100% lead to business. Okay, I love it. Uh, now I wanna navigate. You have a book coming out in July, Meet Me in the Middle. Uh, I am eight months pregnant with my first child. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. I know. <laughs> Woo. How do you manage a family while still being a thought leader in your field? By not beating yourself up and giving yourself grace to go through what you're going through. Both amazing, like what you're about to go through, and even challenges. You know, a lot of I've been getting a lot of emails lately about people grieving. Yeah. You know, like unfortunately, you know, I'm getting older. Uh, so some of my friend groups or some of the people that have been following me for a long time are also getting older. When you get older, one of, you know, there's a lot of great things that come along with it. Wisdom, appreciation, perspective. But there's also challenging things, which is you start getting into those life cycles where you start losing loved ones. And my answer has been give yourself grace. Like, like how do I, somebody the other day was like, how do I keep crushing my business? It's been doubling year over year, but I just lost, he lost his mom and dad in a six month period for separate reasons. I just said, brother, you, it's okay if you don't. Yeah. Like, you might be cliche and like lean into your work and you might triple, but you're gonna, it's not sustainable and you're gonna have to get that pain out at some point. Um, so I, I would say to you, if you like, you know, first child, being the mother, you know, fathers have different variables than mothers. You know, this child's in you. <laughs> I always tell, my, all my buddies who struggle that their kids like their mom, the mom more than them, I'm like, bro, <laughs> they were in that. I'm like, there's only so much we can do as dads. They're like, like, we're in them, physically in them. Like, I always find that fascinating. Of course, there's a different thing with your mom. Like, you grew in there. Um, so, you know, for me, I look at it as, if I'm, again, if we're best friends since grammar school and we're like just talking on the phone, I'm saying to you like, hey, V, like, just fucking enjoy this first year. You're gonna have all sorts, you have no, first of all, you have no idea how you're gonna feel. Right, there's all that stuff, right? Is it easy, is it hard? Postpartum this, like support from, like there's just like, it's real life. Sure. You know, it's real life. I think giving yourself grace that this next year, who knows what it's gonna be, and, but, but I wanna be 70 and look back at that I gave it my all for the child more so than the business, but don't also, if on the second day of the child's life, if you're like excited to grab your phone and like email a client, you're not a horrible mother. Like you're, you're a human being that is lucky that they're passionate about what they wanna do and like balance comes in all sorts of shapes and sizes. So my answer to you is give yourself grace. Okay. Yeah, uh, meet me in the middle. That's, you know, I, I, I'm very excited to read the book because very I have a feeling you're gonna bring light to all ages with this one. Yeah, the V-Friends thing is, you know, for everyone's listening, I have this Pokemon meets Sesame Street IP called V-Friends, and, like, it's a real fun mission. You're right. I really, some of the stuff I've been able to do as a human being for 15 and older, I'm now on a journey to do for three and older, four and older, five and older. And so, you know, these characters are fun. This kid's book is really fun. I'm really excited about it. And the premise of Meet Me in the Middle, it's all about emotional, it's back to this. Find the middle, find the middle. Don't get too hot, don't get too cold. Don't get too blue, don't get too red. You know, you know, find the middle. Patient pig and eager eagle is the story. And, you know, patience is remarkable, but complacency is not. Eagerness is amazing, but sloppy, you know, non-strategical go forward at all costs is also not good. And so finding balance is the key for sure. Uh, my daughter, my future daughter's name is Oakley. Anything in the coffer for the Oak Monster. I love that. You know, Oak Monster is a character for everyone who's listening that comes from my wine library TV days. It was a fake character I used to reference when I would have a wine that had too much oak in it. Um, yes, there is. There's, you know, that's the coolest part of building out this world. I've got all these notes I take and ideas for the future of this IP and I'm really excited about it. And so plenty of, plenty of uh, stuff for the Oak Monster in the future and um, I think you'll love that. Okay. Hey, as a mentor, OGV friend, I am having the time of my life. It's a blast. And thank you because myself, the, our community, uh, 
we're just having, like I said, we're having the time of our lives. So thank you. Thank you. And I'm excited to <laughs> push it on to the next generation. And Oakley's going to be an oak monster for Halloween for until she has an idea of other anything else. So thank you. So cute. All right. Thank my, you. My last question. How do you present a holistic version of yourself while choosing not to include your kids in mm. your content? That's a great question. So, you know, I, first of all, I don't think, let, let's break down your question. So obviously I share a lot, I, I'm very out there. And as you know, I, I don't really share my personal life. Um, I think that personally, I think that over the next decade or two, that will become more common. I think we're in the era right now where people are really sharing a lot. And I don't think they realize what happens when you share your entire engagement, you know, and like, like when you, you know, when you give people, when you give the world things, it's theirs, not yours. Hmm. Right? So I think that there's a lot of things that people haven't gone through yet in their lives. And I also think that people mistakenly use their children and their relationship to get more likes and, aware and attention. And I don't think they think of the back end. You know, when, and I hear this from friends now because I've been talking about this for a long time and I've got some friends now who are like, wait a minute, like I'm getting stopped by people in the street that are saying hello to my five-year-old child and it's a little creepy and a little weird and definitely the kid is starting to react and I'm like, yeah, this is what, this yeah. is what I was talking about. Like, you can't be mad at them. You're blasting out unlimited content of little Connor and they, they, that becomes interesting to people and they wanna say what's up to little Connor. And like, you know, it's very, it's very, you know, it's one thing when a celebrity acts in films and then when they're out and about, people are coming up to them with their kids and they're like, yo, I'm with my family. And we've all knew that, right? Like all of us have heard that. I remind my friends, I'm like, those people are not sharing their family. Yeah. They're just known. They're quote unquote right. You are whoring out your children every third post to get more likes. And when you are out and about, when the audience is like, hey, I don't think they're so wrong. That's what you're selling to them. So I feel no pressure to be holistic to my audience. I feel pressure in providing value to my audience. And value, you know, I don't, I don't think of it in the, I don't put holistic or fully 360 or full transparency. That's not how I think about it. I think about what's worked for me and why I think it's worked for my audience is I think about like why is this post good for them? Yeah. I think that's really worked for me. I think people think about why is this post good for me hmm. when they post. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's what led people to relationships and children and dogs because they get likes and that's what they want. I think about it differently, which is like, why would somebody see this and why would that be good for them? And me posting a photo of being on a fancy vacation or have an expensive watch or a private plane or a pic of my relationship or my kids or whatever it is, I don't think that that's valuable. I really don't. I, I, I can, you can, in a very deep conversation on this, you could say that it's escapism, you could say it's intrigue, like I, I can get there, but it's not high value. It really isn't. As a matter of fact, yeah. I think oftentimes it just makes people unhappy. Like when you see somebody on a private plane, you react like, I can't be on a private plane. When you see someone with like their family on a grassy grove and maybe you're in a fight with your spouse right now, you're like, like my life sucks. And I, I just, I think that people are not thoughtful in what their content is doing to the other side. Uh, that's profound. And as someone who's just been struggling with that, it, uh, with how my relationship posting my future child, uh, it makes a lot of sense. It's like low blow content. And the whole point of producing content is high level content to provide value for the recipients, which and, and by the way, I don't mind <coughs> lightweight content, but I'd rather you post a picture of potentially, let's just talk about this. I'd rather you take a photo of like baby formula on your, like spilled on your notes for work 
and you talking about like some days you just have to lap when you're balancing two things <laughs> versus now you're doing something where you're, you're like head nodding to other moms being like, yo, this shit's hard, right? Versus what I think a lot of people are doing, which is like, this is just gonna get a lot of likes because Oakley looks so cute. Yeah. But like, what is that really doing? I think it's a conversation people need to think about because you're really sharing with the world. Yeah. It's not like you're sharing with your three best friends from high school or your family. You're sharing with the world. And it's intense. The world is intense. Yeah, the world is intense. And, and you've gotta be accountable that like you put it out there. Yeah. When people, like, when people are like, I can't believe these people, well, you put it out there. Yeah, yeah, accountability. And, and we're not empathetic. Like, when someone leaves a nasty comment about, like, I'll give you an example, cliche thing that happens in society. Person posts their kid, they're a year old. A lot of kids, as you may know, like, they all grow up so differently. Some talk earlier, some walk earlier. I saw this the other day, actually, this is a real life example. Somebody made fun of someone's kid because they were like 15 months old. Oh no, it was the first birthday, it was the first birthday picture and the kid's completely bald still, no hair. Okay. And, and it's like, the comment was pretty nasty, right? Like, you know, when's your kid gonna grow hair? Like, what the fuck? Yeah. But, but do you know what my reaction was when I read that, hmm. as I do what I do for a living? I say to myself, we don't know if that's a person who's now on four years of not being able to have a child with their spouse. Empathy. Empathy. Yeah. Like, why would somebody say that? Let me give you the preview. They're hurt. Why are they hurt? Maybe they lost their child. Maybe they had a miscarriage. Maybe they can't conceive. Maybe their spouse just left them. Like, maybe they had a bad childhood. Like, I don't know. Yeah. So these are the things I think a lot about. Gary, thank you. I really, really appreciate your time. I appreciate you being on the podcast and I appreciate everything you do for myself and our world. So thank you. Thank you. Have the best day. Thank Congrats. you. I appreciate you. We'll see you soon. Ready to shatter your glass ceiling while creating legacy and financial freedom? Head to my show notes for our free guide, how to get started in commercial real estate.